Professional photographers know light is the key component to every image you take. As working pros, we either hope for brilliant light at location, or we try and create it ourselves using artificial lighting such as flash. But what if things simply don't go to plan and we end up with a frame that just lacks a little something in the lighting department? Well, fear not as Affinity Photo 2 features powerful technology that can literally transform the scene, enabling you to inject new energy and life into an image that may otherwise be heading for the bin. What's more, the level of precision on how you cast these lighting effects is high. With options for shape, and the colour of light, plus you can even add multiple lighting effects on the same image. Admittedly, this feature takes a little bit of getting used to, but this walkthrough should arm you with all the information needed to give this technique a try. With your image open in Affinity Photo 2's Photo Persona, our first job is to add a live layer, which will enable us to add an effect in a non-destructive manner, meaning we simply can remove it without damaging the original photo. Head over to the Layers panel and head down to the bottom, and you'll see an Egg Timer logo for the live filter layers. Click on it and scroll all the way to the bottom and select Lighting. Now your image will go dark, but don't worry about that. Our first light has been added automatically and is set to spot. You can move the light around, but at the moment it doesn't quite work for what I need. So I'm going to head back to the dialog box and change light one from spot to point. You can move the circle using the mouse, but the problem we've got is that the light is just too bright at the moment. So I'm going to head back to the dialog box and take down the shininess slider and I'm also going to take down the specular slider. Now what I'm aiming to do is to have my subject, the drummer in the street band, standing out thanks to a raised exposure and darkening the rest of the frame but I don't want her to overexpose so I'm just going to play about again with the specular and shininess sliders and also the ambient slider which affects the rest of the frame. There we go. You can also change the size of the circle using the distance slider. You might want to go for a wider view or you might want to concentrate the light on the subject like I am here. So a distance of around 11% works fine for me. Now, not only does Affinity Photo 2 allow us to balance the exposure of the lighting effect, but we can also be very precise about the color adjustments too. So if you head back over to the dialog box, you'll see there's three areas where you can change the colour. In the specular colour box, the ambient light colour box, and the distance colour box. And this is the one that I'm going to focus on. So I'm going to click on it, and you'll see a colour wheel will appear. I'm going to move this marker down to around here for an orange light effect. But at the moment, it's far too powerful. So I'm going to move the secondary nodule over to the white area triangle and this will reduce the effect you can take it all the way down and you'll see it's completely gone there but I want to just increase the the warmness of this frame so I'm going to leave this nodule around here okay so what I'm going to do now is head to the layers panel and you'll see just to the left of the thumbnail there's a little arrow and if you click on this a drop down will appear and that's our live filter layer you can click it on and off to see the changes that we've made. Now I think you'll agree already there's been a big transformation. However, if I move my dialogue box out of the way, I've got my drummer highlighted, but the singer, the main guy in the band, has fallen into darkness as well, and we, we want to fix this. So I'm going to add a second light. Okay, head back to the dialogue box and click on the Add option, and the second light will automatically appear. Now, I think for this one, I will keep it as a spot, but I want to change the angle. So I'm going to move the nodule around and just have the light falling on the singer and his, his guitar, just like this. And actually, because the rest of the frame is quite warm already, I don't need to change the color. I will play about, however, with the shape of the light. And to do this, I'm going to use the outer cone and the inner cone. And you see how much 
precision you have over the control of light. So actually that's working all right. It looks like a street light is just falling on the top of his head. And you've got the beautiful backlighting here. So let's get rid of this dialog box and have a look at the difference that the lighting layer has made. That was our standard image at the start, which was fine, but we really wanted to make our subject stand out and there was quite a lot of distraction in the background. So let's click the lighting layer on and there we go. Now, if we want to go back and change anything again, I'm just going to double click on the lighting thumbnail and it brings our dialog box right up. And I'm going to select light one again. I'm just going to take the specular slider down a tiny bit more just so that the drummer isn't overexposing. There we go. The scene is completely transformed. All I need to do now is head up to File, scroll down to Export, and I can save the file in any format I want, whether it be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. There we go. Have fun experimenting with the lighting in your images, and I'll see you next time.